In this video, I'm going to show you how to gamify one of your Moodle courses. This video is aimed at people who are fairly comfortable using Moodle and whose version of Moodle is Moodle 2 or above. It will not work with Moodle 1.9. You do not need to install any third-party plugins as I only make use of Moodle's core, core capabilities. What I call a gamified Moodle course is simply a course with activities and resources like any normal Moodle course but in which I added some badges that students can collect and they can collect those badges based on activities that they've completed or resources that they have viewed. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing you need to do is you need to go as an administrator you need to go and uh, make a few changes to your Moodle course. The first thing you need to do is to enab uh, enable the completion tracking and the conditional activities which is under site administration and advanced features. So once you're there you need to scroll down, it's at the bottom and enable completion tracking and con conditional access should be ticked such as what you see here. Then you need to have your course so here is a course that I use with, with uh, some of my students. It's aimed at 12-year-olds, okay? Um, and there's one more thing you need to do at the course level, which is to enable the conditional activities. Make sure that the student progress is enabled, uh, the completion tracking uh, option is enabled. And then you go off and save changes. Now, this hasn't made any changes to your course yet. The idea of the completion tracking is that Moodle 2 is now able, uh, sorry, each activity and resource is now aware of its completion status for each student. So, for example, the whole project lecture resource that I've got here, once I switch on um, a particular um, setting for this activity, it will know what student has completed it or not. So let's go and take a look. Um, as per usual, you need to turn on your editing so that you have access to the settings. So I'm going to go and change the settings for the whole project lecture. Okay. Um, you now have two new boxes, one called Restrict Access and another one called Activity Completion. I'll talk about the Restrict Access later on when I talk about the badges. So, for the completion tracking, you have two different options. So, you really have to decide whether you want your activity to be complete, marked as complete when the student has met certain conditions or whether they can just mark it on their own. So, let's go and take a look at what these two things actually look like. So, I'm going to say that they can manually mark it as completed. And I'm going to go into save and return to course and see what's, what's changed. I now have a box with solid edges and a tick in the middle. A student could go off and tick it off whether they've watched the video or not. The other option is to tell, to, to basically have the uh, activity shown as marked or completed when the condition has been met. Now, for this, particular for this particular resource, the only condition that I have is that the student must view this activity to complete it. I'm going to go and save and return to course. Now, you can see that I still have a tick, but my box with dotted edges as opposed to um, solid edges, and that tells me that the activity now needs to meet a certain, a student needs to meet a certain condition to, um, to mark the activity complete. So now that you've done this for this particular activity, you need to go through all of your activities in your course and decide whether you want the activities to be marked complete automatically when, it, when a condition has been met or whether the student can manually mark it complete. Or there might be resources that you don't want to follow at all, like for example this is a label and I don't want students to say whether they've completed it or not because it doesn't make any sense. The label here is just present to break up the course and to help the students navigate the course. So you should go and do that for every single one of your activities. 
Now I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so I've gone through all of my activities and resources and I've decided which ones should be marked automatically and which ones should be marked complete when uh, by a student. And here you see a setup that's quite interesting. Um, I want the students to basically view these six resources in a specific order. I want them to see step one first. I don't want them to, to do, go to step two before they've seen, they've seen step one. So let's take a look at what this takes. It actually says here restricted, not available until the activity step one, uh, st set up your, mou your mouse is marked complete. So let's go and take a look at how I've done that. Again, I'm going to go and edit, and this time I'm going to focus on the restrict access box here. And what I've done is I have restricted the access based on the step one, step, set up your mouse to be marked complete. And then I just made sure that also the students need to um, mark it as complete so that for my step three, I have something to work from. So return to course. So what I've done here is for those six activities, they're all basically dependent on one another. Um, I have done the same for the quizzes here. So, for example, a student cannot reach uh, the two-star scratch quiz until they have received a specific score in scratch quiz one star. So let me show you what this looks like. I've just used one of the other uh, settings in the restrict access and I've used the grade condition instead of the activity completion condition. I tend to stay away from the restrict access by date because um, I don't really want to prevent students from not being able to access a particular piece of work because for example they've missed a lesson. So once you have set up your course, it's time to go and gamify the course. So as I said, my sort of gamified course, all it is, it's a normal course where I keep track of all of the activities and resources and I set up a bunch of labels in which I place an image and a title. And those labels will only be View, uh, viewable by students once they have met a specific conditions, a specific condition, sorry, or specific conditions if there's more than one. So here, for example, I have a neat learner badge. So let me show you how I've made this neat learner badge. So I've gone into add an activity or resource, and then I've used the label here, and then clicked add. What I've then done is I've gone to Open Clip Art and I've looked for a broom. There, I've got my broom. So I click on it and then I think I used 50 pixels uh, and then clicked on PNG here. And I've saved that on my desktop. You can't see it, but it's on my desktop here. Um, and then I edit the label. I go and add the image as I would normally add an image. Find or upload an image. I'm going to go and choose the file, which is on my desktop. Go. Upload the file. There. Then something for accessibility. Oh, just spell it properly. And then insert. And then here I added some text, formatted the text to make it look a bit nicer. Uh, I think I used heading 2. Then you can change the color and so on. Okay, here it is. So here I've got my batch, but now what I've got to do is I've got to restrict the access until a st the student has completed or met certain conditions. And I know here for my neat learner, uh, the neat learner badge, I want them to have completed step six. So that means they have seen all the six resources that I've shown you earlier on and then must be marked complete. And there is something else here that is of interest to you in this particular setup. Do you want the students to see the badge or not before they can unlock 
that badge. In my uh, experience, I've used both. I've used the grayed out version and I've used the completely hidden. And I found that the completely hidden version actually engages students more because they don't really know what's up for grabs. They just know that there are 12, um, 12 badges to, to earn and they're quite happy with that. So save and return to course and you will see the Need Learner badge is there and it tells you what the students, what conditions the students need to meet to be able to get that badge. Now, you need to basically do this for all of your badges. I just want to go through like a couple. Here I've got this one called Tutorial Collector and it's based on the students watching all of the tutorials that I've put together in the course. Now there is no there is no uh, quick way of doing this. I had to go through all of my tutorials and make sure that they were included in the activity completion condition. One thing I didn't show you is that you can have more than one condition, more than one activity to be completed to, for, for the condition to be met. Here, for example, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tutorials that the students need to watch before they can actually uh, reach that badge before they can unlock the badge. So this is where it becomes quite important for you to have um, a naming convention on your course. I can see that those are all tutorials because I've used this little symbol here. I know that the, all these are penguins that I mentioned in a, in a bit. Um, if it is a glossary, I use the word vocabulary in there. If there are level descriptors, I use the word as well so that it is easy for me to uh, know which resource to pick, okay? Right, and then save and return to course. I just wanted to show you that quickly. So once you've done that for all of your badges, you have gamified your course. Now I've gone a little bit, like a step further, and I've added what I keep calling Easter eggs. This is a bit more involved as a process. But let me explain to you first the concept behind what I call Easter eggs. I have 20 of these penguins around the course, scattered around the course, in quiz questions, in glossary entries, in assignments, in pages, literally all around the course. They all look exactly the same. Whenever a student comes across one of those penguins, they are to click on it. So let me show you other examples. So one is an assignment here. Another one is in a page, and I have another 18 around the course. This one is an actual example, so if I click on it, it will download it. Here, I've got an example. I'll download this one also, so that you see that it downloads different penguins. So I have the tradesman penguin, or the plumber, I think. Uh, if I click on, on this one, that downloads another one, number 15, which is the sailor. If I click on this one, it will download yet another one. So it downloads a surfer and you get the point. Like there are many different penguins that need to be collected in the course. Those images, these penguin icons are actually linked to resources that are present on my course. If you take a look at the bottom left of your screen, it shows you that it's linked to a file, uh, file two or three. If you go and take a look around the course, though, you cannot see that file anywhere. It's because I used something called orphaned activities to do that. So let me show you how to do it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my settings and show you that I've got plenty of, uh, plenty of resources in the second topic. At the minute, I'm only showing one section on my course, but in reality, I have activities in two sections of my course. So on my course, even though I've set, so now I've set two, uh, sorry, I've set two sections if I scroll down to the bottom of my course, now I can see all of, the, all of the resources that I had before. For example, I've got my penguin number one here, which is basically just a picture. So let me show you how I did that. I'm going to turn my editing on, and I'm going to add penguin number 21. At the minute, I only have 20. Add an activity or resource, and it is just a file that I'm going to add. I'm going to name it 21. Remember how important it is to um, to, to have a naming convention. I'm going to add this and we'll see why it's important um, why it's important a bit later in the description. I'm going to 
add the file that I previously downloaded from um, from Open Clipart. I keep using Open Clipart because uh, they, there's no problem with of copyright, for example. Let me upload it here. There. And the display, I'm going to add force download. It's quite important that you add this as an option. And I'm going to just keep it the way it is. Apart from here, I'm going to say show activity as complete and then make sure that the students are required to view it. And now I'm going to save and return to course. So now that I have Penguin 21, I'm going to right click and click copy link address or whatever the option is in uh, your web browser. But the idea is that we copy what's on the bottom left of your screen at the minute, which is the unique address to access this particular resource here. And then I'm going to go to, say, this page here to add the penguin. To add, let me show you, this penguin here. So I'm going to save that on my desktop first so that I have access to it. And there, I'm going to go on my page and I'm going to add the penguin right there. I'm going to add an image, find or upload the image, and I'm going to go and upload the penguin that I've just put on my desktop. So go to the penguin and upload the file. I'm going to call this one 21. Insert. And now I have to link my penguin number 21 that I have because this is just the penguin icon. So it's the same throughout the course. It's what tells the students that they need to down to click on it. And I'm going to paste the link that I just copied a few, a few moments ago. And I'm going to open it in a new window. And I'm going to name this 21. And then insert. I'm going to go and save and display the page to show you what it looks like. And then we'll also test it. Before I test it, I'm going to copy this address here. I'm going to click on that and see whether it in fact downloads 21. And it did. Okay, very good. Now we're going to go back to our course and we're going to go back to resource 21 at the bottom and we're going to edit it. And remember we filled in the description here. Click here to see 21 in action. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the link to the resource where I've put the penguin so that I know where it is. I'm going to click insert and click display description on course page and then save and return to course. And there it is. Now we have a bit of a problem because it would be pretty, pretty easy for students to just find the find the penguins, they would just need to scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on each penguin and they would be done. That's where Orphaned Activities actually comes into play. Orphaned Activities is a very clever way to hide some of your resources whilst those resources still being accessible to students through the unique address, through the URL. So let me change back to one section, even though I have uh, resources in two sections. I'm going to go to one section and save the changes. Right now, I'm going to turn my editing off. If I scroll down to the bottom of the page, section two has disappeared. So if we followed the normal Moodle logic, whereby if an activity is hidden, it, can't, it cannot be accessed by a student, we surely shouldn't be able to click on that. But we are able to do that because our activities are not hidden, they're just orphaned, which is slightly different. I can access my orphaned activities as a teacher when I turn on the editing. And if I scroll down, I can access my orphaned resources. Now, you should be able to gamify your course as well by using the conditional activities the completion tracking, the orphaned activities, which are all out-of-the-box Moodle capabilities.